Hi everyone, I want to talk about e -cups. Some call it e cuffs others will call it e cough Whether coughs or cough, don't worry. It's all about the same thing. Well, to have um, occasional e cuffs is fine, is normal, and you just grab a glass of water and you're fine, good. Or you watch the carbonated drinks you've taken in the last few days and drink a lot of fluid, you may be fine. But that is not the situation with some people. They could have a cause for a long period of time, as a matter of you know, days, weeks, and so many interventions, including chlorpromazine, aloperidone, metoclopramine, for they've all been used, but they're not getting out of the problem. Those people could become depressed, they could lose weight, they could have insomnia, they could even commit suicide. So, from nothing to a serious issue that could even take life, he calls it's not a topic to neglect. Okay, let's go. He calls a sudden diaphragmatic spasms. They are repetitive and beyond voluntary muscle control. As a matter of fact, as a result of diaphragmatic irritation. Occasional echoes are normal, but persistent echoes is the one that is calling for concern. The problem here is mainly due to phrenic nerve irritation. Phrenic nerve takes its root from C3, C4, and C5. So some will say from the neck down to the chest. The persistent cause will last 2 to 30 days, while intractable cause will last more than one month. e calls can lead to insomnia. Imagine somebody that is about to sleep and starts having e calls and won't stop. And in, in between sleeps, he or she wakes up with e calls. So it could lead to insomnia. And could affect the rate at which the affected people, particularly with the intractable ones, could even eat. So they have weight loss and they become socially isolated. So that will lead to depression and long-term depression will lead to suicidal ideation, from suicidal ideation to attempted suicide. And if it gets not taken, they may actually commit frank suicide. Because could be fun, in many different situations. I mean, risk factors or causes, prominent among which will be metabolic causes, central nervous system problems, like brainstem damage, problem with the ear, throat, and NASA, that is the ENT problem. Of course, I have explained that it's due to diaphragmatic irritation. So the diaphragm is involved, problem along the thoracic region, the abdomen, alcohol, and so many drugs. When I say drugs, it could mean medication, not necessarily street drugs. But street drugs are not out as well. So street drugs and even prescribed medications. Eating too fast could lead to echoes. Or when eating or drinking, if you swallow air, could lead to echoes. Chewing gum for a long period of time, swallowing air along, or smoking. Too heavy meals with so much spicy and fatty ingredients could lead to e-cups. A 
I've mentioned earlier that alcohol injection strokes brain tumors phrenic nerve damage by any form and of course vigorous nerve damage as well still and causes stress anxiety and of course irritants of all different uh, forms medications example benzodiazepines or steroids so it would not be out of place to as anyone with intractable e-calls for medications on which they've been placed by their physicians because sometimes it's not only the abuse drugs but even prescribed medications carbonated drinks this is often overlooked by the time you get a Pepsi, you get your Coca-Cola, I'm not saying they're not good, I'm not going to die, but could be you know, responsible for the e-cups you are having or your friend is having, carbonated drinks. In children, crying babies or coughing in babies or gastrophageal reflux disease in babies and adults could lead to e -cups. What are the possible complications? It's no big deal to have occasional echoes, but when it's recalcitrant, I mean, you've done everything to get it out, so you're not getting it out and it's persistent, then we'll have problems. One, social withdrawal, because it's embarrassing. Imagine, I don't know, gathering in any place, could it be school, church, mosque, anywhere, you know, in the midst of people who just you understand what I'm talking about, and it's not your fault, it's not your making, so nobody will actually blame you, but you just feel uncomfortable. Chronicity could become chronic and could be annoying, not even to the people around you, but to yourself. Disturbance of sleep, like I've earlier alluded to, disturbance of eating, so there's insomnia and weight loss. And of course, aspiration pneumonitis or aspiration pneumonia. Could lead to vomiting, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, and acute respiratory distress syndrome. There's a possibility of fever, mob disease apprehension, cyanosis, speech anomaly, pneumonia from aspiration pneumonia or aspiration pneumonitis, possible renal failure if there is secondary dehydration leading to acute kidney injury. Implicated medications are benzodiazepines, for whatever reason, levodopa in people with restless leg syndrome or Parkinson's disease. Nicotine containing compounds, there you go, no smoking, okay? Metidopa for abstention, barbiturates for whatever reason you're using it for, either for seizure disorder or pain or whatever. Opioids, you know, for sure for pain, steroids, maybe asthma, autoimmune conditions, you now COPD, anesthesia, you know, anyone undergoing surgery, chemotherapy. Unfortunately, people diagnosed with cancer will take this, identify with them all. Diagnosis. Diagnosis could be made clinically. That could be majorly through the history taking. And of course, there could be signs, even while the affected individual is divulging the historical events. Investigations that could be embarked upon to get to the root will include complete blood count, electrolytes, blood rear nitrogen, 
city of the head if you are suspecting tumor or brainstem damage, abdominal ultrasound, toxicological screening in case of street drugs or alcohol, chest x-ray if you think there's complication with pneumonia, either aspiration pneumonia or aspiration pneumonitis. History should be all around possible causes. Until you have arrived at the exact cause, kindly advise the affected individual to stop taking carbonated drinks. Treatment Vigor stimulation. Please be careful with bradycardia and possible cardiac arrest. Please. And vigor stimulation could be done by stimulating the posterior pharynx. In other words, it could be posterior pharyngeal wall stimulation. It can also be by false expiration against closed glottis for not more than 10 seconds. Stop all offending medications identified. Stop boozing, stop alcohol. Take out fluid or take a glass of water very fast, immediately you are experiencing e -cups. In fact, that is the commonest thing we do everywhere, Not that I do anyway. But I have e -cups. I grab a glass of water and drink. That's worked for many times. But that's not the case or the reason for making this presentation. This presentation is actually because it is uh, persistent or refractory to many uh, attempts to stop it in many people. Stop carbonated drinks, like I've said. I think I cannot overemphasize that because it's something we easily overlook. Aspirate gastric content if there is abdominal distension. Surprise yourself or be frightened by someone, although if you plan it, it's not going to be a surprise or frightening anymore, but if you run into such a situation, it will have e cost. Okay, I'm not saying you should scare somebody to die, but if your sibling is having e cost, try to hide somewhere and pump up suddenly and see if that will help. Anesthesia to block phrenic nerve, because we are dealing with phrenic nerve irritation here affecting the diaphragm. Electronic vigorous nerve stimulation and many medications could also be used. You can use copromazine at 25 to 50 milligram dose intravenously, but must be given very, very slowly. As low dose as 25 milligrams should be given over one hour. You know why? Copromazine could teach the person taking the medication into very severe hypotension. Okay? And if you want to give it per aura, you can give 25 to 50 milligrams per aura three times a day. You are free to use alloperidol here. And I'll go for 2.5 milligram intramuscularly, just a single dose. And if I'm not winning, individual could be placed on 2 to 10 milligram per aura once daily or thereafter. Metoclopramide could be given as 10 mg intravenously or intramuscularly. After that, we place the individual on 5 to 10 mg per hour twice daily. Baclofen to relax the muscles. Okay. 5 mg per hour twice daily. You can use amitriptyline 5 mg per hour once daily. Carbamazepine or amantodine, gabapentin, ferripine, vaporic acid. The last thing you are going to do, at least the last result, is phrenic nerve destruction. That could be done surgically. Well, you can ask me if I don't want to do it surgically, how else would I have done it? Well, 
I'm not used to giving order to anybody, not a military guy, but here I'll give the following now as maybe warning or let me still call it advice. But if you have ECOS or you are handling anyone with ECOS or you are prescribing medication to handle ECOS, never give benzodiazepines. All the benzodiazepines of the table, please. If you have been treating anyone or you yourself have been taking any treatment, medication or any form of intervention for two to three days and you are not you now winning, it's not effective, change. Change. Try something else. Don't stop intervention suddenly. Okay? And of course, needless to say that you have to tail off gradually. Okay? Consult pulmonologist. Don't do it alone. Okay? Neurologist or neurosurgeon. Because they may have brain tumor and you may have to operate upon that. Gastroenterologist. ENT surgeon. Of course, general practitioners or family physicians who will do the bulk or follow up. And with that, I come to the end of the presentation as far as it calls could be handled. We've gone over the possible causes, the possible complications, the embarrassment that could even lead to weight loss or suicide. So I hope this will help someone somewhere. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate that.